and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and behind us is a bit of a shapeshifter. It started off as the Impreza XV, then became the XV and now it's the Subaru Crusoe Tureka. Crusoe Tureka, yes right. It's the Crosstrek, it's the Subaru's latest all-wheel drive SUV. Come let's take a look at this. It was 2012 when Subaru launched their XV and it was a product that was so popular that it actually sold in New Zealand around 7,000 units. And the reason why it was so popular was that because it was an all-wheel drive SUV. Now move forward 10 or so years and what they've done is rather than just give it a facelift, they've given it a name change too. So as Matthew called it, uh, I'm not even going to attempt it, it's now a cross track and, but it still retains that sort of ruggedness for going off off road so therefore it's not just a, a pretty face it will go into mud ruts and pull yourself out of it and things like that so it is a vehicle that you can go anywhere in. In terms of styling, it's a lot sleeker, a lot sharper. They've made the headlights a lot uh, lot more angular, a lot more in your face as such. And also the grill here, this hexagonal grill, hasn't got the sort of frame around it. It's sort of more exposed, more, more open. And also when it comes to the trim, there's a lovely feel to it. There's a the sort of rub your fingers and file it down a little bit and that I'm told actually adds to its wind resistance or lessens the wind resistance and that comes on with the likes of the products down the side the wheel arches so let's go and check those out so like I said the uh, the wheel arches here are relatively square shaped to them but again has that lovely sort of beveled feel about it it looks well actually trust me it feels really good also plenty of vents along here and actually shrouds around these 18 inch feet that are Really, really sharp looking. I, I really like them. <laughs> it's, it's amazing what keeps me happy. The vehicle itself, we've got the Sun Blaze Pearl in terms of coloring, and it's kind of a sort of browny, reddy color. It really looks good in the sunlight. Looking further down, actually, in terms of size, lengthwise, we're around about 4.5 meters in full length and around about 1.6 meters in height. But the big thing is the fact that there's a 220 mils worth of ground clearance. So you are going to get over these massive rocks that wear out nearer there you go the other thing is roof rails plenty of stuff to tie down those adventure gear that you're going to take wherever you're going on your adventure and color coded door handles and actually i'm reliably told that this little knobby thing down here is to help with the rigidity of it and actually although it does sit on the xv platform it's been made around about 10 percent more rigid so Talking rigidity, this is the one for you. Around the rear here, we've got a nice roof line spoiler. Plenty of little bits of protection around the rear glass here. The light structure around here is a, kind of like a U-ish shape. And also the brake lights, look at that. Really sharp, really good from there. And also plenty of reversing lights from there. You've got your new Crosstrek badging. This rear sort of protection is is pretty robust and also there's no kicker tailgate but when you lift up you got plenty of uh, well I would say enough boot space to make sure you can go anywhere and also these little designs here are all based around uh, sort of a, a mountain range they're here and also just inside the rear doors so giving you an indication that you can go anywhere but we're going to go under the bonnet now the Crosstrek is coming with two powertrains. One is an e-hybrid and the other one is this two litre naturally aspirated engine. This one emits 196 newton meters of torque and 115 kilowatts of power. So there you go, plenty on going on from there. Well actually it's enough, particularly when it's strapped to a Lineatronic eight speed gearbox, which is a little bit like a CBT, let's face it. But it actually does lay down the power very good, especially when you put it into sports mode which is what we do quite a lot in terms of fuel efficiency it's around about 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers and out of the exhaust is around about 165 grams per kilometer so again not topping the scales as far as efficiency or uh, emissions but uh, it's pretty good and did I mention that it's an all-wheel drive and will go anywhere anyway speaking of things that you can take to other places Matthew's inside and he'll show you what's going on in there now what Dave was saying about going anywhere well, actually, I have been driving this Crosstrek pretty much everywhere, on the motorway, around town, 
on some more backcountry stuff and it's done really well all around and i think genuinely on the inside of this car as well it reflects the same sort of ethos as the outside you've got plenty of rougher stuff rougher plastics and things around make no mistake about it but at the same time it does make sure that the subaru the all-wheel drive ness of this car if you like is still a big part of the experience it's still rugged but because it is effectively a city crossover you do have leather leather appointed seats you do get heated seats there's a 10 speaker harman kadden audio system in here you get a sunroof as well and of course i mean wireless charging and it's just loaded up and in fact it has actually got an aux plug as well so something i haven't seen for quite a long time it's quite nice to see that return to a brand new car that you can actually buy the other key thing is in terms of the storage now it is a practical family crossover so you do get generous sized door bins where you can actually fit a water bottle you do get two large cup holders here you get a little nook over there generous space under the armrest you've got a good sized glove box there as well and they really have thought of everything frankly in terms of making this cross track the perfect car for well everything really and that comes down to the infotainment screen there which is an 11.6 inch unit and it pretty much contains everything of what i'm going to say next now this subaru starlink 11.6 inch infotainment screen makes use of a few buttons here and there but it's predominantly touch based as you can see there you've got your volume knob on this side and your tuning knob on that side shortcut button for the rear defogger front defogger and then your temperatures for the dual zone climate control looking straight at the screen so it's divided into three parts over there the first of which is a little shortcut menu you can have uh, right now we have the x mode displaying on there but you can flick over and take a look at your acceleration fuel consumption uh, approach and departure angles and your navigation as well as your audio input the main screen of course has all the apps on here this is the home view and you can actually toggle um, between different screens add more shortcuts to things as well and once you click on apps you'll see that it does actually have wireless apple carplay and android auto close that and it also has bluetooth connectivity there's aux and there's usb connectivity underneath as well so it's really well equipped in terms of all the connectivity options you've also got navigation built in to to make it even easier because subaru has the uh, eyesight system that means it does monitor drivers and you can set up profiles according to your different drivers which you can activate using this sort of icon over here of a person below that there's the air conditioning controls and you just simply click that to bring up the dual zone climate control and you can adjust the temperatures and the direction of the air vents too but i gotta say that that is a little bit distracting to use when you are driving along and definitely an issue that i have faced now in front of the driver you do have traditional dials as you can see rev counter on the left speedo on the right and that's really a welcome change from the fully digital screens we see nowadays but of course there is still a little bit of a digital aspect to the subaru cross track as you can see in the middle there you've got the information screen which is divided up into several parts at the top you actually have a bar that shows you how much whether you're adding or subtracting from the liters per 100 kilometer figure and below that the trip as well it does say 7.9 liters per 100 k's there's the average but i have managed to get it down to 7.5 with a lot of motorway driving below that you have the your cross track sitting on the road and that sort of comes to light when you do use the adaptive cruise control also note that when i put my foot on the brake it actually does light up the brake lights on the car there on screen which is quite cool um, and when you do activate adaptive cruise control you will see that if you are following a car in front it'll be a subaru legacy most likely or some other type of subaru so that's quite cool from that aspect too below that you have your digital speedo and then further down you have a little green eye monitor which is actually subaru's driver scanning system where the sensors are somewhere either in the middle there 
or further up and make sure that the driver is keeping his eyes or her eyes on the road and not being distracted which is quite smart from that sense below that you have the gear selector now it does have a cvt box but it does have artificial shifts if you like and you can actually use the paddle shifters here to move through the gears there next to that there's a little monitor that says i and you can actually change that between the sport or drive or the i drive and that just changes the torque delivery a little bit to give you either sporty or drive down low or a more economical drive speaking of the steering wheel well it's a nice sort of firm unit with good thumb grips and a, a good sort of sporty feeling to it helped by the fact that there's paddle shifters on it and then of course you have all of your steering controls on the left side your audio and phone controls and on the right side your adaptive cruise and your different drive modes as well so there is really plenty going on up front here in the driving seat right there we go we've gone through the exterior and the interior of this cost cross track and there is so much going on it is really a go anywhere car so i think it's time that we well go somewhere so first thing you'll notice is a matthew's driving and so i'm particularly nervous and b the pull away is not throwing me back in the uh in the chair behind uh it's it's a very con well i'd say conservative but it's a very well measured uh pull away and definitely on a road like this that's in big part thanks to its all-wheel drive system that i mean there's just grip straight off the line which is hard to come by on some of these gravelly surfaces so that definitely is a big help yeah and particularly in new zealand where there are a plenty of gravelly surfaces there's uh, uh i mean i think it's something ridiculous like 60 or 70 percent of the roads are unfinished and actually with the potholes that you throw on there is particularly unfinished that's correct and in that way that actually makes this cross track almost like the perfect car for new zealand roads because not only have you got yes this off-road rugged ability with the full-time all-wheel drive the raised ride height um, and all that good stuff but then you've got creature comforts like the seat heater as dave just found out which i turned his on you've got the leather appointed seats the arm and cat and audio system the sunroof all those little luxuries which make this a nice place to be actually yeah but more importantly is how it drives um now i've driven this before i drove it on the launch a few things that i picked up on it is a well-balanced vehicle but if you push it hard it is nose heavy so you will tend to uh is it understeer yeah yes. understeer a little bit so and it's not uh, not uncomfortable but if you do really want to try to treat it like a sports car it will bite back a little bit but on the whole it feels really balanced and the big thing for me is this seats or other seats what Subaru have done is welded the seats or <laughs> connected the seats to the frame so what it means is when you are going into windy shifty turny roads again of which there are in, a lot in New Zealand your head moves less so less car sickness less everything really the movement is very stoic your your head is uh, pointing in the right direction which is always good what you want I mean speaking of pointing in the right direction Dave did touch on this but I've got to say this cross track is actually great fun to drive in the corners you know it you take it into some of the sharper corners the bends the all that stuff and it just sticks really well that power goes to the wheels you know where you need it and all of a sudden you have grip you know just going around it is a really fun drive I think and it actually did make me smile on some of my test runs as well in this so very uh, very pleased with the way it sits on the road steering feels good as well i found a nice weight to the steering wheel get enough feedback through the steering wheel of the uh, of the ground below which is which is good there is definitely electronic steering wheels can feel removed sometimes from the car and you know you miss that feedback but this cross track has no issue with that at all i mean the steering feels really sort of direct and you know it takes you where you want to go uh, and then of course you add to the, that with the um, sports drive and of course you have 
not not quite a hot hatch on your hands, but definitely something more lukewarm almost, I would say. I spend a lot of time, <laughs> coincidentally, in sports mode, which is an easy, easy accessible via the steering wheel button. And uh, it does give it that, uh, it actually shows you the torque curve off the off the bat and actually on the, wheel, on the steering, uh, on the instrument cluster. And it's, it's kind of good to, to see that it's got straight going, where you go. And I mean, it just makes things like pulling away like that so easy. Even in economy mode, it picks up pretty fast, but sport mode is what you want for really getting the power down to the road. And yes, as very much Dave pointed out that it is, it does show you those ECU maps, which still shows that Subaru has that brand, that bend or that appeal to more enthusiast sort of um, based owners. And I think that's important to make sure that it hasn't lost its way with a car like the Crosstrek, which is marketed for both urban driving as a, as well as off-road driving the visibility around all around i found was 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 adequate um not I can't remember the rear rear is a little bit does get a little bit mucked up when you're dirty when you're going to dirty places and i don't but so around the city it's fine don't go to those dirty places in the city but certainly visibility mirrors are good i like the sunroof uh again you can see all the stars at night great stuff and that connects perfectly with the subaru starling system which is used through a really nice big touch screen over here you get all your features on there it's very easy to navigate but i must admit a little bit distracting in terms of using the air conditioning controls but that eyesight system makes sure your driver's eyes are always on the road and an interesting fact that i discovered actually while driving in a way where the sun was setting behind me is that the setting sun sun's rays actually tend to almost fool around with the eyesight system so even though you may be looking at the road rightly so because of the rays being interfered with the lasers or radars or whatever the car doesn't actually doesn't know that you are it's not sure and it keeps showing up and telling you to focus on the road but it's just more so the sun playing around rather than you you know not looking at the road so there's a, a top tip for you <laughs> there you go don't drive in no with the sun set behind you that's the, right. you heard it here <laughs> first the also the 10 percent rigidity or extra rigidity in the chassis does make it firmer which is fine but it also the comfort's still there i mean the seats are fine i'm not i'm not uncomfortable even when we're going through these mud ruts right now it's uh, it's okay it's not i don't think you're going to be on a long on a long run worried about what's going on and with the x mode you can very much go through those mud ruts and stuff like that so i do have it in normal mode right now which is perfectly fine for most driving but you do also get access to uh, sand mud and snow as well so it really has pretty much every base covered uh, for off-road driving so ideal i mean it is also it's a, uh, an upgraded x mode system as well so you can take it to the uh, the beach you can take it to the snow or you can just take it round town nice it is and i think in a sense the cross track does that really well as it's a family car but at the same time quirky enough to be a little bit special and of course incorporates that off-road capability in a very much usable way so an suv that actually does the uving or is it whatever it is yeah the u part of suv So there you have it, the new Subaru Crosstrek, not to be mistaken with the Subaru XV because it's not that anymore. Um, more refined, better name, <laughs> certainly for, it does does what it says on the tin basically. So it treks and it crosses, so lots going on. Uh, I prefer the tech, I prefer the way it drives. Uh, it's, I like the fact that I, my head is not bobbing around when I'm going all over the place. So much improved and enjoyable ride. Absolutely. I think it's, you know, appeals to a really wide group of people because it's got that sporty style, that outlook to it. It's got the convenience, you know, you can have a family in here, but at the same time, it hasn't lost its essential Subaru-ness 
that all-wheel drive system is still there. I've just invented a word apparently, but it's all well and good because this Subaru can frankly take you to any sort of world apparently. Even to another page in a dictionary. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Ha <laughs> ha!